This is Tom Creasy, and I uh, want to thank you for joining us, and we will go ahead and get started. So as I said, um, this is part one of a two-part series, uh, Introduction to Traffic Simulation Using Transmodeler 6.0. We will have a uh, an advanced uh, applications of traffic simulation with Transmodeler part two schedule for probably be in February, something like that. So today is just uh, the very basics, but um, wanted to uh, let everybody know we just released Transmodeler 6.0 all about a month, month and a half ago, and just wanted to make people aware of um, its features and just traffic simulation principles using Transmodeler. So uh, again, this is Tom Creasy with Caliper Corporation and joining me is Dan Morgan. Uh, Dan is our product manager for Transmodeler and uh, has been with Caliper since uh, the very beginning of Transmodeler. Uh, my experience was uh, primarily in the consulting industry, but uh, have been a Transmodeler user uh, since uh, very early, one of, one of the uh, first beta testers of Transmodeler 1.0 before it was released. So uh, certainly don't have uh, the expertise with it that Dan does, but I've been a longtime user. And so my perspective uh, since joining Caliper Corporation a couple years ago has been primarily um, as someone who has used it. So uh, these are the things we want to talk about today. Briefly, I'm going to tell you about Transmodeler, um, how it works as a traffic simulator, uh, in including its its GIS architecture, and just some of the, the basic things that uh, maybe separate it from uh, some other ones. Then Dan will talk about uh, traffic simulation uh, and just go through really setting up a, uh, a, a quick uh, simulation project using it. Uh, we'll switch back to me, and I will talk about how we have worked with uh, the McTrans Center to uh, integrate Transmodeler with the highway capacity software. And then uh, Dan will take us to the finish talking about uh, a couple of features. It's traffic impact analysis tool, which I think for um, a lot of practitioners would be very popular, uh, doing some basic traffic signal timing optimization. And then the more complex uh, features and functionalities, we will... Uh, discuss those in our part two webinar some early in uh, 2021. <clears throat> Transmodeler, uh, and most of you I assume are familiar with it. Uh, some of you maybe are not. It is a microscopic simulator. There are several of those that are um, on the market now. And as a, as a simulator, it simulates individual vehicles as they move through a uh, a street or highway network, applying mathematical models of driver behavior and traffic flow theory uh, to simulate the traffic phenomena that we observe in the field. Uh, being microscopic, uh, it incorporates this randomness or stochasticity uh, that is uh, probability based uh, that we see in normal traffic flow. So we know that we can uh, maybe observe traffic conditions on a what we call a, a quote average or typical unquote day of the week and we could come back the following week and do the same thing and both of them be typical or representative and yet be different because we do have some uh, this randomness that occurs from day to day so that's what traffic simulation does is incorporating that randomness Typically, when we're talking about traffic analysis, we, we talk about a couple of things. Uh, one, um, the, the spatial variation. As practitioners, we, um, you know, we may be talking about uh, doing it for an entire area. I think more commonly for practitioners, we're really talking about it at the sub-area or corridor or facility level, like, uh, say, an arterial study. Sometimes it's only just a, a single intersection, and we really are uh, focused just on that uh, that point on the map, if you will. Talking about resolution, uh, it it runs the uh, the spectrum from all the way from macroscopic, where maybe we use the planning or travel demand models to to analyze uh, area wide or regional 
traffic flows and patterns uh, many times well into the future uh, for uh, maybe a 20 or 30 year forecasted horizon. Uh, microscopically, you know, down at the intersection level of detail where we are actually analyzing individual vehicles as they uh, flow through an intersection or along a segment or somewhere uh, in between the, the mesoscopic resolution where we're really talking about evaluating clusters of vehicles and not just not just one or not just the, uh, the whole flow, but the, uh, in groups. Transmodel really uh, itself is capable of, of handling everything ex except the microscopic analysis. And for that, we have our, our companion uh, software, TransCAD. But Transmodeler can do everything from uh, one intersection all the way to uh, at a microscopic level of analysis, uh, an entire metropolitan area. And there have been a number of those uh, models that have been developed using Transmodeler. <clears throat> when we talk about the difference between uh, simulators like Transmodeler and tools like uh, ACS and Synchro, we're really talking about the difference between deterministic and stochastic methods of analysis. Deterministic, things like the highway capacity software and synchro, but we know that these are not subject to randomness, that each each model run that you do, uh, no matter how many times you do it, you get the same output. Uh, we can might want to think of it as evaluating uh, the herd instead of the individual animal or the, uh, the group, in this case flow, in terms of uh, factors like uh, vehicles per hour instead of a trajectory of an individual vehicle and of course deterministic methods are typically based on the highway capacity manual. Stochastic tools on the other hand incorporate this randomness uh, that we see in day-to-day -day traffic, uh, the, the variability and uncertainty that goes along with it which is why we uh, typically perform multiple runs, runs with varying random number seeds and of course this is um, central to to what we see in uh, micro simulation models. Transmodeler uh, is, uh, contains a very a robust and validated set of behavioral models. Uh, for driver behavior, uh, you know, this is, um, they are calibrated for US driving conditions. Caliper Corporation is, is located in the, the Boston, Massachusetts area and, um, so it's a, a U.S.-based simulator out of the box, calibrated for U.S. driving conditions with defaults backed by U.S.-based research. And uh, our behavioral models are corroborated with empirical analysis methods such as those in the Highway Capacity Manual. And uh, we uh, these parameters such as operating capacities and performance characteristics are routinely validated in practice as we continue to advanced the software. In terms of vehicular performance, uh, our models, uh, we have detailed models of uh, vehicles in the U.S. fleet, including auto and heavy vehicles. Uh, we've incorporated accurate treatments on uh, the effects of vehicle operations of grade and horizontal curvature, on acceleration uh, speeds, those types of things. Uh, Transmodeler is customizable to reflect these uh, certain things like route restrictions and lane use privileges. Uh, Transmodeler includes a ground, uh, a level of detail including ground truth intersection and lane geometry as you can see in the graphic here. So uh, we have the, the representation of the actual lanes uh, that would make up an intersection here. It gives us the ability to faithfully model things like uh, capacity, Q storage, spill back, those types of parameters. Uh, one of the strengths of Transmodeler is um, that it is it, built on a GIS engine, so everything in it is, is graphical in that respect. And it, each of the simulation model elements is actually uh, a layer in a GIS that includes a corresponding relational database. So for example, in this case, the things that look like blue spider webs are lane connectors. And each one of the lane connectors uh, is a, a record in the database of lane connectors. And they graphically show uh, permissions and, and prohibitions for uh, vehicles on a link or at an intersection. Uh, being a GIS transmodeler, 
uh, these these layers can be hidden, turned off. So if you don't like uh, the look of lane connectors when you're running a simulation, it's as easy as just hiding that layer. But for developing a model, for checking uh, the accuracy of of the network, the GIS functionality is a, a very helpful tool to be able to do that visually. Um, things like uh, detect loop detectors uh, at, at intersections, such as what you see here in the uh, the blue rectangles are also visible, and um, uh, again, a, a layer in the in the GIS um, database. <clears throat> and then uh, Transmodeler also can show uh, in simulation the operations of a traffic signal. So you see the little the window that's open there that shows the state of the signal uh, as the simulation is taking place. So I'm going to um, now hand it over to Dan Morgan and just let him take you through some of the the basics uh, for Transmodeler and then we'll uh, come back to me briefly uh, after that and I will talk about the HCS to Transmodeler integration. <clears throat> 